Hi, my name's Rich. Uh, I teach a little bit of ecological design and a little bit of building science. So I wanted to show you some of the elements in my home that really stood out to me as something that we might be able to address through the Clean Energy Works upgrade. In our attic space, uh, there was some uh, pretty good indications that we had some problems with that in terms of sealing up the house. And at least originally within this space, looking inside here, there's been lots of great upgrades that were done originally to the house plumbing wise but insulation wise you could see the slats and the attachment points where all the asphalt shingles were and in fact during the daytime you could see directly through to the outside the home was only insulated on the wall to the living space here with some bat insulation so i knew that we were going to want to do something to try to increase the insulation here and that's where hammer in hand was able to come in and talk a little bit about the opportunities for using some of the spray foam to not only insulate it but really seal the space up this is my first experience working with this type of spray foam and I was really pleased with the way that it came out because it really does become a permanent element of the home and it's an investment that we made looking to be here for quite some time and I'm happy to know that the foam that we put in here is going to stand up for decades really and be a part of the house that's going to contribute for quite some time. It's really tough to tell now, but the foam that's applied to the roof part of it is about 10 inches thick, which pushes the R value up to about an R38. It's a little bit thinner on the um, vertical surfaces and results in an R value of about R21. To get a sense of how much the house is leaking before any work is done, the blower door allowed hammer in hand to depressurize the house to a certain set level, 50 pascals. At that point, you can measure how much air is flowing out of the house to keep it at that depressurization level. Before any work was done, about 4,000 cubic feet per minute of air were flowing out of the house to keep it at that 50 pascal level. After the work was done, only about 3,000 cubic feet per minute were flowing out of the house to keep it down at that level. So there was a really nice, about a 25% reduction in the leakage of the house. We're down in the basement looking at the new furnace that was installed as part of the energy upgrade. And I think this was the most surprising part of it for me, because although I understood that moving from our older furnace that was at 80% efficiency to a newer model that was 95, 96%, there'd be some benefits in terms of energy saving. I was really surprised at how much it impacted the comfort level of our house. The big thing about this new furnace is that it ramps up and blows air at a variable level. So when it comes on, it can come on at a range of speeds and you don't notice this blast of hot air followed by a long period of time where the house cools down and then a new blast of hot air. One of the things that surprised me about the new furnace that I wasn't entirely aware of before this, part of this process started was the sealed combustion chamber that was going to be a part of the new furnace here. Before, the, the previous furnace would draw air from the area down here in the basement. And if it were competing for that air from either a vent or an open window or open door somewhere else, it might actually starve that combustion chamber of air. Instead, what we have now is ducting that leads directly to the outside. And it guarantees that there's a clear source of fresh air for the combustion chamber coming directly from the outside and then a venting back to the outside. We've worked a little bit on the upstairs area in the attic where there was a lot of heat being lost through the gaps and leaks in the, in the space up there. With all of that air traveling out though, there had to also be a source for air to enter the house to replace that stuff lost through the attic as it rises up through the house. And I didn't really realize how much was happening down here in the basement, but because of the communication here at the rim joist, the openings here between our basement area and an adjacent crawl space, a huge amount of cold air was coming in to replace all of that warm air that was going out through the top. This meant that as we were heating the air, all we were doing was losing that to the outside and replacing it with cold air from this area. What Hammer in Hand did was to come in and using that same spray foam agent here, seal this all up along this rim joist and close off that communication to the outside. That meant it was going to be a lot more difficult for cold air to find its way in and the air that we heat to keep the house comfortable was going to retain in place much longer and end up with a much more comfortable internal environment. This whole process of working with hammer in hand to upgrade our house has really been wonderful for me because in addition to seeing how all of these different practices are implemented, I also get to benefit from the results. And it's been really nice to be in a much warmer, more comfortable home.